Sabi ko noon, ready for you 2020. What a life. Okay, pa-claiming it pang nalalaman. Wala namang kaklaim-claim sa taong to. Papunta kaming Tagaytay. Tagaytay? We're gonna visit Tagaytay, Tagaytay ba? Tindi ng pasabog ng January. Buti sana kung fireworks lang. Kaso, dumating ang unprecedented times. Lahat ng pwede mangyari, nangyari. Siya nga pala, Lola Nora ko. Siya lang ata ready. Basta pang two years na to, ha? Anyway, yun na nga. Nakulong sa bahay, nakaubos na ng bilihin. Pag lumabas, nakakapraning. Iniwalay anong gusto mo makasama sana habang buhay. Seven years yun, Zoe! Mabuhay ang bagong laya! Naghanap ng kaadikan para di mabaliw. Wala halaman. Two, nine, nine, nine! Three thousand! Oh, Miguel! Catch up with me! Di ba 25 ka lang? At mga balik alindog na program. Happy birthday to me! Happy birthday, mag-isa! Happy birthday, Miguel! Kung ano-ano sinubukan. Ay! Masyado matangos. Oh, better! Kung ano-ano pa mga napagtripan. Kung ano-ano ang binili dyan. Opa? Di makapagpagupit. Tinry na hindi mag-ahit. Bumagyo, bumaha. Ang daming nangyari. Wow! Diba? O, oh, ha? Ah, Galay ka lang! Pero magbago na ang lahat. Huwag lang si Lola Nora. Last year sucked. But she was there to keep my spirits up. For that, thankful ako. Hi, La. Ano, Miguel? Ready ka na for 2021? <laughs> Sabi ko noon, ready for you, 2020. What a life. May pa-claiming it pang nalalaman. Wala namang kaklaim-claim sa taong to. Papunta kaming Tagaytay. Tagaytay? We're gonna visit Tagaytay, Tagaytay ba? Tindi ng pasabog ng January. Buti sana kung fireworks lang. Kaso, dumating ang unprecedented times. Lahat ng pwede mangyari, nangyari. Siya nga pala, Lola Nora ko. Siya lang ata ready. Basta pang two years na to, ha? Anyway, yun na nga. Nakulong sa bahay, nakaubos na ng bilihin. Pag lumabas, nakakapraning. Iniwalay anong gusto mo makasama sana habang buhay. Seven years yun, Zoe! Mabuhay ang bagong laya! Naghanap ng kaadikan para di mabaliw. Wala halaman. Two, nine, nine, nine! Three thousand! Oh, Miguel! Catch up with me! Di ba 25 ka lang? At mga balik alindog na program. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday mag-isa. Kakalungkotin pala. Happy birthday, Miguel. Kung ano-ano sinubukan. Ay, masyado matangos. Oh, better. Kung ano-ano pa mga napagtripan. Kung ano-ano ang binili dyan. Opa? 
hindi makapagpagupit, tinray na hindi mag-ahit, bumagyo, bumaha, ang daming nangyari. Wow! Diba? O, oh, ha, ka, galay galo! Pero magbago na ang lahat, huwag lang si Lola Nora. Last year sucked, but she was there to keep my spirits up. For that, thankful ako. Hi, La. Ano, Mikel? Ready ka na for in a series of wellness webinars this year brought to you by the leading global life insurance company, Manulife. Bagong taon, bagong buhay. So the question is, kamusta ang umpisa ng 2021 ninyo? Now, at the start of a new year, we usually look back on the year that was. Now, it's pretty obvious that 2020 brought so many learnings and kahit na maraming challenges, it made us realize what really matters in life. Now, for many, it was a time that they realized their priorities and things they want to achieve. That's why a lot of people list down their goals, things they want to accomplish, and resolutions in hopes of a better and improved life for the coming year. Like, oh, wow, I'm getting emotional in a month. My resolution for this year is to stop being this cute. Um, you know, 2020 was quite difficult for my cuteness. Um, I'm expecting much more for 2021, but then again, that is my cross to bear. 
But on a serious note, as you know, uh, very, very soon, I'm starting my journey into being the hashtag best husband ever. Yeah! Pinakilig ang sarili. But kidding aside, every time we enter into a new year, we want to feel in control. And we claim that this is the year that we will be our best selves. But sometimes, pretty obvious, the unexpected happens, turning our world upside down in an instant and derailing our goals and the plans we have set for the year. At some point, I'm sure these questions have popped up in your mind several times. How am I able to achieve my goals? Am I financially prepared for an uncertain future? How do I make sure my goals are secure even amidst emergencies? Diba? All legit and valid questions. And you know, all that starts with defining clear financial resolutions. And this is why this webinar is very, very timely. This is... Well, money-related solution, resolutions might seem daunting at first. It can be hard to even figure out where to begin. Lalo na kung Gen Z ka or millennial ka, <laughs> baguets. That's why we have young and successful speakers today to talk about financial planning and goal setting and teach us how to all be financial savvy at a very early age. Diba? Just to have a preview, may I ask our special guests to say hello to everyone watching. Hi, guys. I see everyone's happy to be here and we have so many attendees this afternoon. Now, throughout the program, if you have comments or questions for our speakers or kahit sa akin, so please go ahead and type in your thoughts in the Q&A box at the bottom right side of your screen. Now, later on, our guests will address these in our Q&A session. Now, we will, we will also do something different today. We will have a game with our celebrities, so stay tuned for that because we all know this will definitely be an insightful and fun afternoon. And syempre, Man U Life is also giving away gift certificates worth up to 10,000 pesos to three lucky winners. So once again, stay tuned for that. That is happening at the end of the program. Now, you know, many people embarking on financial planning for the first time may be stumped or simply overwhelmed. Or baka naisip nyo, is tama ba yung ginagawa ninyo? Now, I want you all to meet our first set of speakers who will give you financial one-to-one, some practical info on financial planning to help you on where to begin and give realistic ways on how you can achieve your financial resolutions throughout the year. Now, are you ready to set your hashtag goals? Now, these speakers are two of the top financial advisors of Manulife Philippines. So friends, please join me in welcoming Kito Shalcera and Cherry Brinas. Good afternoon, everyone. everyone, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Luis. Happy New Year. All right, so uh, I'm Rafael Paolo Chalceta, and I'm a financial advisor and unit head of Manulife Philippines. I'm Sherry Ubrinas, also a financial advisor and uni- unit head in Manulife Philippines. So uh, let me start with a little background of uh, financial planning. Uh, but don't worry, everyone, it's really not as complicated or as intimidating as it sounds. So let us begin Financial Planning 101. Uh, all right, so first let's start with the basics as far as money is concerned. So I have a couple of questions here. Uh, the first is what is your mindset? All right. What is your mindset in entering uh, your money? Right? What do you think can you do with your hard-earned money? Mm. Are you thinking of saving your money? Or are you already thinking of how you will spend your money? Or even better, this is actually my favorite, are you thinking of how to make your money grow? so that you have more money for the future. Whatever your mindset is, what is important is your attitude towards money. Next slide, please. I have a question also for this slide. Are you spending your money wisely? Hmm, You should put that in mind. Is it going to a good cause? Uh, You must be conscious of your financial well-being at all times. I believe this is key. Being aware of the state of financial health that you are in will help you keep a balance of your finances as far as keeping check on what you are earning and of course what you are spending next slide please how many of us are guilty with the things that you see right in front of you right now Uh, these are actually bad spending habits that we normally fall into so the first one is spending more than what you earn which is what we call a spendthrift second living beyond your means Hmm. 
Number three, engaging in impulse buying. Paborito ng marami ito, build impulse buying. Number four, having the got to buy because it's on sale mentality. Nanay ko actually guilty na guilty dito. Uh, frequent spending on unnecessary stuff. Hindi mo pa natatanggap ang sweldo mo. Ay, ubus na. Alright, so you know I heard a saying from an old woman, but very pretty woman. Uh, she said in English, rock rock in the sky. You get hit, don't get angry. In Tagalog, bato bato sa langit, matamaan, wag magalit. So can everyone relate to that? It sounds funny, right? But if you don't break these bad habits, then we are all in a big, uh, big trouble. Uh, the solution? Next slide, financial planning. All right, so I'll just read it for everyone. Financial planning is about making deliberate decisions that allow you to get closer to your goals or sudden decisions that allow you to stay on track even when things take an unexpected turn. So let me share with you uh, maybe a simple financial planning cycle that we can uh, all observe. There are five things to consider. The first is you have to set SMART goals. And when I talk about SMART, uh, SMART stands for simple, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound. And then after this, you, got, you have to gather and analyze information related to these goals of yours. After which, you have to know your options so you can make an intelligent decision. Of course, you need to create and implement a plan. You can't just think about it. We have to execute. And finally, monitor and modify the plan as needed to your goals. The next slide will give you some helpful tips on what you can do with your money to make, to make it grow. As you can see, there are three rules of thumb. There are actually plenty financial tips that I could actually share with you guys, but uh, let's focus on these three uh, to consider. As far as I am concerned, I practice actually the 50-30-20 rule. It's the, it's the perfect formula for me. I set aside 50% of my income for necessities, 30% for my wants, and 20% for financial goals. We should actually also diversify our money and not just put it in um, one basket. And actually guys, this is actually my final slide. I can go on and on. After all, this is actually what I do for a living. I could talk about money all I want, but I will stop here and turn you guys over to my colleague who will talk about how you can grow your money. Hope you all learned something from me today. Thanks for the opportunity to share and catch you all guys later. Over to you, Cherry. Thank you, Kito, and good afternoon again, everyone. Now that you have some ideas on financial planning and money habits, I'm here to share some quick insights and tips on how you can grow your money. Earlier, Kito touched on the importance of saving your money. So let me ask you, what do you do with your funds? Do you deposit it in a bank? Some people I know put their money in a safety deposit box at home. Or do you invest it? Probably in a real estate, or in the stock market, bonds, UITFs, and mutual funds. Saving money should almost always come first before investing it. They are mutually connected and both allow your money to grow over time. At Manolive, we follow a three-step approach to make sure our clients will enjoy the financial security they deserve. It all starts with step one, which is to set up an emergency fund. An emergency fund can be anywhere from three to six months of your monthly expense or depending on your monthly income. Now, why is this important? Last year, we were all blindsided by this pandemic. Millions lost their jobs and sadly, lost the lives too. Madami ding nagkasakit. And if an emergency fund is not in place, it would be very difficult for a person to survive that crisis. Hence, this should remain liquid. But it's true that not, nothing, um, it's, what it's true that not having one can hurt you when emergency happens. Overdoing it could also hurt your future goals. And I will explain to you later. Step two is to ensure that there will be sufficient life insurance coverage to protect you from life uncertainties. 
I'm a single parent of three. And because I'm the breadwinner, I know that my priority is to have that income protection by having sufficient life insurance coverage. Should anything happen to me, I am assured that my kids would survive even if I am no longer around. Having that peace of mind, knowing that they will be all right, even if I'm gone. Life insurance is not expensive. You can get plans that are affordable and suitable to your needs. Third, when you reach a point that those first two are already taken care of, one should consider investing it in order to meet your other financial aspirations, like having a decent retirement, making big ticket purchases, like your dream car, or a European holiday that you and your family deserve. If you notice, our third step is to invest. Saving money is great, but saving alone is not enough. Why? In the past, people should save money at home or in the bank because interest rates then were high enough that you could actually leave on interest. These were mostly double digit, about 10% in most cases. But in the recent years, interest rates have gone down and are not enough to leave on. Looking back to the past 10 years, we can see here how much your 1 million would have earned if compounded over the years and based on the vehicle that you put in. Compounding interest occurs when interest rates gets added to the principal amount invested. Simply put, interest on interest. Have you placed it in a savings account given the fluctuation rate per year or rather the fluctuating rates per year? The compounded amount would have only been 1.1 million for a time deposit a little higher at 1.2. While investing entails some risk, have you placed your money in our very own Philippine Stock Exchange given the returns of the index the past 10 years? You would have more than doubled your money by simply investing it rather than going the usual savings route. And that's how you grow your money. So like Kito, I can go on and on about this, but I'll stop right here. Hope you learned from my presentation and should you have questions, I'll answer them later. Meantime, over to you, Luis. Oh, I apologize, everyone. I was on mute. My fault. Thank you very much once again, Tito and Sherry, two of Manulife's top insurance advisors. Definitely informative and very helpful. At this point, when everything seems so accessible and about everything you see is what you need, it's very important that you, of course, keep a healthy mindset about your financials as early as now and find ways to make your money grow so you can make sure that you achieve your lifetime goals and live every day better. Now, folks, now is your chance to consult about your finances for free. If you have questions for our financial advisors, just type them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and they will answer them later on in our Q&A session. Now, indeed, it is very important to set your goals early and save often if you want to make the most of life's opportunities while you're young. That is why our next set of speakers are young celebrities and athletes that will share how they're achieving their life hashtag goals and what their financial challenges are. Lahat naman tayo meron yan. Hindi ko napapatagalin pa. Let's give it up for budding entrepreneur and influencers, Jasmine Curtis and siblings, Andre and Kobe Paras. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi, Andre. Hi, Kobe. Hi, little sis, oh, Jazz. Una-una, nice. una, happy, happy new year. Happy, happy new, year. new year, guys. So, kamusta ang new year nyo? Ladies first, Jazz. Uh, it's been good. Uh, I spent it with my best friend just here in Manila, and we made sure to get uh, active day one pa lang so that we can set that uh, standard for the rest of the year, that we're active all throughout. Starting the year right. Kobe? Oh, I was with Andre and the family, so, you know, it was just great being with everyone, you know, despite the pandemic. So, I'm just really blessed now, you know, I was with family and people I love. Yeah, but Kobe, when you were saying that you were with Andre, you seemed pretty sad that you were with him for New Year. <laughs> Medyo nakakainis lang, pero wala, sanay na ako. Tapo naman ako eh. You can't choose family. You really can. <laughs> Andre, how about you? Yes, uh, I spent time with my wife. and I ah, joke lang. I spent time with wow. my family. And uh, I think it's great because, um, you know, we're starting the, uh, the year, right? Kumbaga, it's like a fresh start. And that's what I think it's very important. You know, kahit naman hindi siya holiday, just make sure to spend time with the family. To always be, you know, motivated and always be happy. 
well, I'm still hoping to lose the holiday weight. They're all right here. <laughs> it's going to take a while. Okay, we're talking about something very, very serious and important and very timely. Okay, so let me ask you guys, Kayumuna, uh, Kobe and Andre, what do you splurge on? Kobe? Um, I splurge on a lot of clothes and a lot of shoes. Uh, I basically invest in myself. Yeah, that's really a good excuse, huh? <laughs> uh -huh. I have to. That's really a good way to put it, Diva. Right? Okay, so Ikao, more of clothes, Kao. What do you save on? Um, I invest in a lot of paintings. So oh, nice. when I try to save money, uh, I try to support local artists here in the Philippines. Nice. If you don't want me asking, who's your favorite local artist? Uh, right now, it's probably, his name is Distort Monsters. Uh, if you see around, you know, he has a lot of graffiti as well everywhere. So he just inspires me because he's not just a, you know, a street artist. He's more of a painter, that kind of guy. And galing din, diba? If you talk about art, grabe din sometimes the appreciation of some pieces. Exactly. Like Andre, you, what about you, bro? What do you say, Me, what do you splurge on? Uh, I splurge on um, gym equipment because, of course, during the pandemic, a lot of gyms were closed. So I made sure to, you know, buy equipment that I need to stay healthy. And I also splurge on balik buying boxes. So just in case Kobe has old clothes, I can just, you know, get it from him. Para tipid. Guys, diba? Diba? Galing, ah, galing. Why is jazz? I actually don't splurge a lot on myself. Um, I, I like to wait for a lot of free things. <laughs> I think that's, okay. that's, all, that's our, <laughs> I know, that's our uh, benefit sometimes, you know, as okay. uh, influencers or personalities. No, but in, on, on, a, on a more gastos type of sense, like, siguro my dogs and my pets really. I said they they're the ones that keep me company when I'm alone or when I'm at work they come with me so it's more of like making sure they're happy that makes me happy type of thing so yeah what are your spending habits Jazz do you have um, a spending habit do you have a saving habit like parang like what we were talking about earlier from uh, Tito like would you save fifty percent of your uh, of your talent fee yeah I I do that actually um, I learned that from my manager my mentors. And um, they, they showed me that from an early stage pa lang of my earnings, I was able to compartmentalize my talent fees into different percentages. So like, I first, I started with like budgeting my parang monthly gastos. Tapos, I could see from there what I could set aside for savings or for pang, pang, pang wala lang na mga kung ano -ano gastos lang. And then the rest will go to like whatever, uh, like a charity or let's say, you know, something that I want to advocate for. Because I really wanted to be able to spend wisely or at least smart para, para involved ako as much as I can be. What about you, Andre? Um, sorry, what's, uh, what do I, sorry, what was the question again? How do your I? Habits, your yeah, habits, your spending, spending or your habits. saving habits. Well, for saving habits, I make sure when I do get my uh, TF, I make sure I put it in the bank first. And then hopefully once I get to save up a lot, this is before I had any advice from any financial advisor. So this is what I do. If it's wrong, I'll be glad, uh, glad to ask for help. But uh, for now, I just make sure I save money and then see if I can buy any, you know, potential real estate like lots or maybe if I could maybe franchise a business. So that's what I do first, and that's what's on my mind whenever I get my money because I want to make sure my money grows. And if there's any other way, I'd be more than glad to, you know, ask help from our financial advisor. So that's pretty yeah. much it. I make sure to invest first. Kobe, on a scale of one to ten, with ten being the highest, how would you rate yourself in terms of being knowledgeable when it comes to financial planning? Honestly, I'll probably say a six, just because you know I've had only my best friends and my mom talk to me about you know all these financial stuff. So. Ah, you got the guidance. What about you, Jazz? Uh, I'd like to say it's a good sturdy eight. Like, I feel like I, I consume a lot of, like, observation from people around me who spend a lot. Like, not gonna name who, but... Like, like anyone dear to you? Yes, yes. But, yes. You know, I, I know that person, too. Like, like, the observation are, like, you know, even just my friends who like to uh, save or who or medyo karipot, or even my dad who's medyo karipot. Like, those are like things you would pick up and kind of analyze, okay, bakit ganito sila mag-spend, or bakit? You know, and, and from there, I pick up and uh, attach it to like the parang, the logic that uh, mentors around me would give or 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 the knowledge behind that. Para naman, it makes sense to me. And I know 
You're trying to stay right in the middle of those worlds, hindi ba? Ito tatong ko para kay uh, kay Andre at kay Kobe. What's the biggest splurge na pinagsisihan yon? Um, probably my last painting because I have there's no place to hang it at all, so it's just stocked up. Okay, okay, Andre. I'd have to go with um, gym equipment just for the sake that. I want to have a complete gym set up, but I don't get to use it because it's just cool. So, you know, I'm finding ways to get rid of it, but nobody wants to buy it. So that's yeah, but problem. don't forget, once you start using it, like what Kobe said, that's pretty much investing in yourself. That's true. Diba? Ito kwento, at kwento, kundi naman, that's a part of this panel. There was one time I was in New York. I was doing a film. Okay, so I had a free day. Tapos may nakita akong sobrang gandang jacket inside this branded store. Okay, so I saw the jacket. I loved it. I walked in. Uh, and everyone took care of me right away. So they gave me food, they gave me sandwiches, but that's how it is, when they take care of you in, in the States, in New York. Uh-huh. So everything and everything. Then they said, that jacket, the last piece, was bought by Will I Am of the Black Eyed Peas. Diba? So could you imagine? Okay. It's okay. And it so happened, there were other fans that came to the store. Na yon. So, okay, so I was there, and I had about you know six of my tagahangas with me by the store. So I was asking for one size, so they had one jacket sent over from a different department store. And when it finally got there, I realized that I never looked at the price. So could you imagine? So finally, when I looked at the price, parang sinundo ako bigla na mga ninuno ko. Parang I thought parang oras ko na. I, I heard, I heard singing. I heard a bright light. It turns out it was six figures. So, okay, I, yeah, I was planning on leaving. Okay, I was planning on you know just sneaking out of the store. Pero ang dami ko na palang nakain, chaka na inum, at chaka all my fans were there. So nakakahiya kung iniwan ko sila bigla. So yun ang <laughs> I ended up buying that jacket. Um, used it twice or thrice. It's a nice jacket, but up to now, pinagsisisihan ko parin yun. So eto jazz ang tanong ko sa yon. Okay. So let's say you have that urge, that impulse to buy something pretty expensive. Like, how do you resist that temptation? What I do is, for example, I see it for the first time. I it has to be something that you feel like you can't walk away from, but at the same time, like you give yourself at least, parang a breather of one day or two days to think about it. And then what I say to myself is, if it's been purchased in those two days, it wasn't meant to be. Like it was meant to be for someone else, just so that I don't feel bad. But also, um, just so that also I can think more about, okay, tap may return ba of investment nga ba ito? Will I wear it enough in the next year or in the next five years even? Will I wear it uh, more than once or three times in a year? Parang sayang naman di ba? So. That's what I do when it's like a big amount that I I will think about spending on. I give myself one or two days to think and breathe and sleep on it. Parang pag napanigipan ko siya, it's meant to be for me. Okay, maganda, magandang tiktik yun. Come back and think about it after two or three days. And balita ako, you also have a new business venture. Yes, yes, I yes. Do. Tell us about it. So I'm starting one with a couple of friends, uh, my childhood friend, and we're thinking about putting up a line for uh, loungewear and also like candles and all of that things that make you feel relaxed and feel like it's like a uh, you're at home lang in your own little spa in your own little like utopia with scents and all that. So that's what I'm trying to venture into now. After trying out the music industry, I'm moving into like lifestyle and home and like just. Things that are that can be made locally as well, so that I But can support uh, industry workers here. Is it your first business? Uh, no, this will be, I think, my fourth attempt oh, at nice. a business. Nice, so, nice, nice. Um, Keep going. Yeah, so it's 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 an experimental thing, you know. It, you you won't always get it right the first try sometimes, um, especially if you're. You're starting out with people with the same level of knowledge as you. I think that was the biggest lesson that I've learned. That you also have to um, 
be open to people who have uh, bigger knowledge or bigger uh, background in terms of business and operations, planning, uh, financial. So, you know, I think I kind of got ahead of myself in my first few ventures and that didn't go too well, but I've accepted that. I've made peace with that. And now I'm, I've recovered a little bit financially from that boo-boo and I'm ready to start again. And now I'm making sure I can get all the advice, all the like mentoring I can in terms of business. And I've accepted hindi ako uh, business uh, professional yet in terms of entrepreneurship uh, other than on myself. So I need to be able to get all the backup and the knowledge that I need. Actually, you think about it, even if you ask the mega billionaires, I'm pretty sure that their first attempt wasn't always, you know, the best one. You know, it's still a long process. You may already be successful. You may have every business that you want. But at the end of the day, it's an ongoing journey. Exactly. Kobe, Andre, what are your dream businesses? Let's say if someone gives you X amount to invest in, to put up something, what would it be, Andre? X amount. That's a good question. Hmm. I would say uh, um like my dream is to own real estate i'd go with maybe buy a lot of um real estate like maybe lots and houses because like uh, what i learned a while ago from sir Kito, i think he's the one who mentioned it that you know real estate the value goes up maybe through time and i do believe that is one idea that i would use it for and maybe do a couple of franchises maybe i mean you franchise some of my favorite restaurants or you know bring in some brands from other countries for you know for people to try but that's if I have the right amount of money that's given yeah. to me. All in Kobe. all, I would invest. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Go, go, go ahead. Yeah. Go, sorry, sorry that, that's what I meant. Uh, I'd, I'd invest. Kobe? Um, I'm, I fell in love with the beach, so I want to put up like a, a, a hotel or, you know, maybe a resort by the beach. Uh, when I went to Palawan, you know, I already had a vision of having my own place there and, you know, having a bar, having my own setup. So maybe one day when I get that much money or the amount that I need, you know, I can invest and uh, put up my own uh, resort. The hospitality industry. Hey, Kyle Kobe, what advice can you give to young people now when it comes to money? Uh, I think you just have to, you know, just do what you love and just save. As much as you want to buy something or you have the urge to get something, just save. Uh, especially with what happened to everyone last year, you know, the pandemic really hit us really hard. So, you know, the best advice I got from my mentors and my parents was just to save my money and just focus on what I love to do. Andre? Uh, for me, like uh, what you said earlier, um, it, it hit me too, uh, Luis, that you invest in yourself. So I hope this is related. Uh, I do believe if you invest in yourself, for example, by, you know, eating the right food, working out, you're, you're healthy. And if you're healthy, you get to do more work. And if you get to do more work, you get to save more and you get to be more productive. And that's what I believe... For me, maybe for the people watching, they, some of us are athletes here, some of us here are fitness enthusiasts, and that's something relatable to business as well and to financial uh, things. Because if you're healthy and, and you're productive and you're always happy, you get to think right. So that's what I think I can you know, uh, contribute to this. Jazz? I definitely agree with what uh, both the Perez brothers have said. You know, it's when you can invest in yourself, when you can save. These are the things that will really help you also as a young, uh, maybe if you're young, you're starting out in, in the professional world and it's your first time. If you're living at home, ay nako, make the most out of that that you don't have to pay for rent, wala pa kayong property tax, all these different things, the bills, like make the most out of that save as much as you can because one day you will start to spend on your own you will start to pay for your own bills and when that time comes you want to be able to be prepared you want to be able to you know say you did it on your own and that you took advice from those who were willing to give it to you um sometimes i own nothing makinig because we feel like ah, i'll learn it as i go along but sometimes it's just good to be open to listen to what uh maybe your parents or titos or even like a friend of a friend who's knowledgeable and finances you know give it a goal give it a listen and um, take it take as much as you can and because it can only help you and yun talaga kung ako sa inyo compartmentalize your money so that meron kayong idea on what you can spend on and what you have in your savings para at least lagi ka compacted and knowing how much you have all the time the bag goes to show that there's always something new to learn 
Right. So thank you very much, Jasmine, Andre, and Kobe. I'm sure I've inspired a lot of young attendees this afternoon, and a lot of them can relate to your financial goals and challenges. Now, friends, if you have any comments or questions in mind for Jasmine, Andre, and Kobe, once again, I encourage you to type them in our Q&A box at the bottom right side of your screen. We'll get to them later on. In the meantime, let's give away prizes for our guests. And up for grabs are 2,000 pesos and 3,000 pesos worth of Sodexo GCs. Now we have pre-drawn two lucky winners and we are saying congratulations to Trisha Agapito. Congratulations. And our next winner, we are saying congratulations to Ednalyn Masagka, winning 3,000 pesos worth. Congratulations, Emmanuel Life Representative. We'll contact you on how to claim your prize. Now from seeing how our previous guests work on their financial resolutions to achieve life Hashtag goals as singles and millennials, we now move on to the next chapter. Itong chapter nito I can relate because as you know, um, I was uh, recently engaged sa aking napakaganda fiancé na nasa harap ko ngayon, may hawhaw, nandun lang siya. At itong next speaker natin, nauna lang siya sa mga ilang years sa akin, papunta sa next chapter na yon. And actually, isa siya sa mga unang-unang nakaalam ng engagement namin because this next speaker is very, very close to my heart. Now, this superwoman is an award-winning actress, a host, top brand endorser, a businesswoman with several businesses like her very famous cosmetic line of BLK and her recent venture, Recess, an active wear line she just launched last year. Now, to add to this list, she's also an amazing wife and a super hands-on mom to a very beautiful, cute na cute na baby girl. So, ang tanong, ano pa ba ang hindi kayang gawin? Nang binibini ito. She's been in the industry since she was young and her achievements just keep on growing. Now, no one else can best define what hitting both money and life hashtag goals but this lady. Kaya naman di ko napapatagalin pa. Join me in welcoming my best friend ang nag-iisang Josa, Miss Anne Curtis. Hi, Nips. I can't hear you. You might be on mute. Hi, good afternoon. One all, one all tayo, one all. <laughs> happy, happy it must year. be a sign of age. We don't know yeah, how to mute and unmute one. ourselves. Sorry about that. So, how are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. Um, you know, it's been quite the last year was quite a year, but um, you know, it's time to reboot, restart as the new year has begun. Um, and we are doing great. Yeah, what did you guys do for New Year? Um, New Year, we were on Hayman Island. Um, we did a little family trip. We missed Jasmine. Um, but yeah, it was really great because it was the first time Dahlia got to um, go to the beach. It was warm ang water. Hindi, hindi freezing okay. cold. Okay. Well, Lips, basically we're here because we're talking about financial goals, diba? So, ikaw, can you share stories on how you manage or handle your savings when you were starting in showbiz? And especially, you know, the last 20 years, you started when you were how young? I started in the industry when I was only 12 years old. Wow. So, I was okay. fairly young. Um, ang talent fee ko, uh, 1,200 pesos. <laughs> wow. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was how I, it started. And, um... Uh, when I was 12, of course, I did not handle my finances at the time. Um, my parents were the ones who were setting aside um, all of my savings. Um, so I really didn't get to handle it. It was only when they turned it over to me at the age of 18 um, that I really got to be hands-on with my own um, money and savings. Um, but before they turned it over to me, um, they did teach me about the way of life and how to uh, save. Sorry, sorry. Uh, l let me interrupt you. So you had your money when you were 18, correct? Yes. Okay, so my question is, bakit throughout our friendship, ako palagi pinapabayad mo? Ang sinasabi mo lang sa akin, hindi mo nakahawakan pera mo. Bawat kain sa labas, bawat lahat. Sinasabi mo, Manzano, I don't handle my finances. Pakibayaran muna. Baon ako sa utang dahil sa'yo. That's not true. Nakailang na libre din ako sa'yo, ha? <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Meron then. Um but um of course but before that like my mom and of course my dad would teach me about the importance of budgeting. 
so that when they turned over my savings, I was prepared. Um, they would, of course, give me pocket money here and there, but the lump sum of my savings, it was really um, only when I turned 18. So when I was be given, um, when I would be given that Hunting allowance, you would really learn how to budget, like what you would spend on. At that time, would it be gimmick or a nice meal? Alam mo yon, para hindi yung pagpipiliin mo at that time, de ba? Kasi konti lang budget mo. Um, but yeah, so when I turned 18, that's when I really had to learn how to handle my expenses. And, um, you know, I didn't have a financial advisor at the time. Um, but what I was taught by my guardian um, and the person who was my road manager at the time, um, she taught me to have a quota for yourself um, when you're saving. So I would have a quota for the year of how much I would have to save. And syempre, dapat when you have a quota, hindi mo tinitipid yung sarili mo, yung parang, okay, this is, okay na ako dito, pwede na akong gumastos. Um, so you, you set a reasonable um, and of course, an attainable quota for yourself. And once you've re reached that, then that extra money that you have, that's when you can spoil yourself a little bit more. Um, just like Jasmine, I've also learned how to compartmentalize my, my savings. So I would have, um, like her, um, you have ones for ties or offerings and donations and charity. Um, I also have one for tax. So that whenever I get an amount, nakahiwalay na yung babayaran mo sa tax. Yeah. Um, and my quota money, which is for savings, and then um, one for everyday gastos. Okay, so safe to say, now we, you and I, we're already a bit on the mature side. Diba? When you're much younger, uh, sabi natin, sometimes you get to be a bit, you know, carefree when it comes to spending. Yeah. Like what you said, you know, gimmick from, you know, go to the mall, getting whatever you want. But now that you have a very beautiful family, how has your financial habits changed? It's definitely changed a lot um, because now I have an extra an extra person to think of. I have to think of her future, of what it would be. Do I really need this new pair of shoes, diba? Pwedeng kay Dalian na lang. So it's really changed um, the way that I handle my expenses and my savings. Let's say, now, of course, like what I said, you have a beautiful family. Then you come back. Let's say Dahlia gets some uh, commercials. Okay, mm -hmm. so what would you do with her talent fee? Um, we've already discussed this. Everything will be completely hers. And just like what happened to me, it will be turned <laughs> over to her when I think she is at a responsible age. Maybe um, when she's about 65, no? That would turn over her money. Naman, I guess that would be the right thing to do. But no, when she's at a responsible age, then everything will be turned over to her. And I know, like what I mentioned earlier when I was introducing you, you have very successful businesses, Tibas. You have BLK, you have Recess. So how did that all start? Um, you know, of course, when I first came up with, Re with BLK, um, Everyone knows how much I love lipstick, how much I love cosmetics. So I really wanted to come up with an own brand that would um, reach out to my fellow Filipinas and um, something that was attainable for them. Um, so that's why I started that business. Um, but of course, along the way, you really, when you come of age, when you become a little bit more mature, you realize that you really have to have a backup plan. Um, you have to have a business because, you know, being in this industry will not be forever. So how will you continue to provide for yourself and your family? So that's why um, I decided to come up with businesses. Um, but in the beginning, um, of course, just like Jasmine, just like Jasmine, I've also had like failed businesses. I started off with a restaurant. I invested in a restaurant and it didn't um, go the way that I had thought it would, um, but you know, you just keep on going and um, finding something that you truly enjoy and speaks to your customers. And I think that's why BLK really worked um, out and why we're still here, even surviving during the pandemic. Um, and then of course, Recess came along, which is an active wear line. It's something that I truly enjoy. Um, people know how much I love to work out. Um, and again, it was something we wanted to um, basically, it's made by women for women. So it's a brand that I'm hoping that every single P Filipino will own. So, yeah. 
But when, when he started BLK and Recess, did he talk to a financial advisor? Basically, who taught you the ins and outs, you know, of a business? Was it self-taught? You know, no, definitely not self-taught. Um, I don't have a lot of knowledge when it comes to businesses. Um, that's why I think it was very important that I found partners who have knowledge in that industry um, and who have helped me and have guided me and have helped me um, with the financial and accounting um, aspect to the company. What was your biggest realization um, in 2020? Uh, I think it would have to be, it's very important to be, to have saved for rainy days, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it's very important that you're prepared for anything. And that's why, you know, the message that I would like to tell everyone is to take time to save, um, especially when you're young. There's so many things that you want to buy. It's so tempting with social media. You have, you know, so much marketing thrown at you. But e-commerce, um, e-commerce, e so um, you never know when when a pandemic would happen again or anything. And you need to be able to know that you are prepared for the rainy days. From a financial standpoint, how do you prepare for, you know, Dahlia's future? Um, well, I just make sure that that's another thing that I've done. So as you know, I've, I have for tax, I have for savings, and now Dahlia has her own as well. Wow. Do you have any, can you get your personal advice for everyone watching right now when it comes to maybe, maybe business investments or money? Well, you know, as I said earlier, when you plan to have a child, Manzano, yes, <laughs> you have to be prepared financially because, you know, you want to be able to give your child the best life that you can possibly give, give them an education, um, give them the needs that they may, they may, may need throughout their life. So it's very important that you are prepared and you have saved up for that. Well, uh, exacto. Speaking of that, Jesse and I, she's right there in front of me right now. Um, we spoke about it. Na parang when the time comes that we have our own child, and I told her, naman, that if our child, boy or girl, looks like you, Jesse, looks like Jesse, <laughs> that that child stays in the house, kahit kailan niya gusto, whether boy or girl. Basta kamuha ni Jesse. Pag yung anak namin naging kamuha ko, yung anak namin is out of the house by four years old. Grabe ka! <laughs> Kaya kailangan so, uh, I talaga. know that's not true. I know that's de, not de. Of course not. Of course not. So once again, thank you very much for sharing your story. And of course, your financial resolutions and habits over the years. There's no doubt why a lot of people admire you. Hindi ka lang isang napakagandang Diyosa, but also because you make things happen. You set goals and achieve them all. But friends, don't go because the webinar is far from finished. We still have a lot of exciting activities in store for all of you. At alam nyo, eh, kahit pa paano on TV, the Game Master ako. But here, we're going to have a fun game for our guests. So let me call on once again, Anna and Jasmine, and Andre, and Kobe. And I think Kobe disappeared for a second. Are you there, Kobe? Oh, he's yeah, right there. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back to Jasmine, Kobe, and Andre. Okay, I know you've already shared your stories on managing your finances, savings, and investment, but also people want to know kung sino ba talaga ang maggastos sa inyo and different things about you guys. Kaya kasi kayo lang ang nakakaalam ng totoo tungkol sa kapatid ninyo. And we'll find everything out through this game. Okay, this game is basically who's most likely to our sibling face-off. Okay, we have a selection of fun and exciting questions for the four of you. You know naman how this works. I'll throw in a question and you guys tag the person you think is most likely to do what I just said. And all you have to do is raise the card you are holding. Okay? Okay, Anthony, Anthony. Let's find out. You guys ready? Everyone set? Here we go. When you guys were younger, who's most likely to ask for more baon because na ubus agad? Okay. Anne says Jasmine. Si Kobe says Andre. <laughs> okay. Si Ate. Okay, so medyo kayo, mag magkatama kayo. Kobe and Andre, talagang tinuro nyo si Andre. Bakit mabilis maubos ang baon mo nun? Well, um... Grabe kasi, started... No, 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 Dre. Let me start. Grabe oh. ka kumain and ninanako ni Andre yung baon ko. Yan yung ginagawa ni Andre. Sa sobrang gutom ni Andre, ninanako niya baon ko. Hindi, hindi, hindi. I get your money. I just forget to ask for permission. That's not stealing. I just forget to ask permission. So, kung baga, nakita mo yung wallet niya, kinuha mo lang na walang paalam. Yes. 
And I said Hindi. sorry after. Iba, iba si kuya, harap-harapan. Hawa ko yung ano, allowance ko. Kukunin niya, tsaka tatakbo siya. Grabe. I'll, say, sorry. I'll say sorry. Okay, so at, at least we're not simply talking about finances. We're mending family issues. Mm. Gumagawa tayo. <laughs> You. Okay, gumagawa tayo ng paraan na maayos natin ang mga pamilya na nagkakawatak-watak dahil sa mga ganyan. Pero si Anne, ang sinagot niya kanina, I see, you answered, Jasmine. Jasmine. Pero si Jasmine, ang sagot niya, I see Anne. Okay, so ikaw muna, Jazz, why do you think mas mabilis na uubos ang baon ni Anne? Kasi mas malabas siya, mas magala, she likes to go shopping, she, she makes libre people like the friends and our... our some friends. Sorry, Kuya Manzana. Wait, wait, wait. She makes me <laughs> break her friends? Uh, Jazz, alam mo, sa tinagal ko ng kaibigan yan, umuubo na ako ng alikabok sa gutom dahil wala ako nakuhang libre mula dyan. Uh, it, it, my, it, um, nag- choppy, choppy. Choppy ka, choppy. Uh, yeah. Okay, and so why did, did he answer na si Jazz? Si Jasmine kasi, when she was very young, mahilig talaga yan na sa labas, makipaglaro. And she'd be buying, um, what do you call it, plastic balloon, all of these things. So, nauubos ka agad yung, yung baon niya that's meant for school because she's, you know, after school hours, she's outside yeah. playing and nasa tindahan, nasa sari-sari store, kung ano-ano. Yung mga soft drink na sa supot lang, di ba? Yes. Oo, oh, okay, so, ito, ito. This ubos is a ang baon. Good question para sa inyo. This is a very good question. The question is, Sino ang mahilig mangutang? Let me see. <laughs> si Andre pa rin. <laughs> Andre, um, is this a cute para sa'yo? Complicated say. answer per ang si ate. Ako na mangutang? <laughs> sa sarili mo. <laughs> Actually. Actually. Okay, wait. Can you please help us? A- ano yun? Nangungutang sa sarili mo. Yeah, I'd say me as well. Yeah, from from my knowledge, because I know she has like a set like amount for her allowance for herself. So when she goes beyond on that, she can't <laughs> ask for a loan from herself. Oh, <laughs> sa sarili. Pero si Kobe, ang tinuro niya si Andre, si Andre din naman, aminado na siya. But the main question is, pag pinag-usapan natin ng utang, dapat kaakibat na pag-usapan ang bayad. So, nangungutang nga si Andre, pero Kobe, nagbabayad ba? Uh, sa totoo lang, di ko talaga alam eh. Kasi What si Andre, fuck? sobra siyang kuripo. This is how he stays rich. He's gonna act poor and then mangungutang lang siya. Ganun lang. <laughs> Wait, I, I thought we were fixing the family already. <laughs> Making it worse. No, I know. Okay. So, eto maganda. Another good question. Who's most likely to treat everyone when going out? Okay, let me see. Si Anne, sabi niya siya. Okay, si Jazz, sabi niya si Ate Anne then. So that means, ikaw palagi ang taya. Pag lumalabas. Yeah. In short, yes. When it comes to the family, when it comes to friends, ano ba? Everyone. Yeah, most of the time, everyone. And once again, walang umabot sa akin. FYI lang po, wala. <laughs> That's why I deserve to be spoiled din naman when it's you or Erwan. <laughs> Okay, fine. So for Kobe and Andre, your answers are most likely to treat everyone, Kobe. Okay, so Kobe, when it comes to friends, family, same thing? Uh, it's most mostly with friends and Andre. Um, you know, what I think is, is like I'm blessed with, you know, stuff that a lot of my friends don't have. So, you know, I just like treating them out and just giving them little tokens to show them that I appreciate them. Nice. Okay. Ito, maganda rin to. Speaking of uh, e-commerce kanina, who is most likely to spend at least an hour on their phone doing online shopping? Okay. Okay. Lahat aminado naman ng konti, except for Jazz. Ang naturo niyo talaga, si Ad, you're not much of a, an e-commerce person ba, Jazz? Uh, I have quite good self-control. Like, I'll have my shopping basket for a good two weeks, like, naka- stagnant lang siya doon, two weeks na. Tapos, I, I end up not buying. Okay, for Anne, in a month, in a month, how many times do you purchase from e-commerce sites? Ha, grabe siya. Grabe yung ginamant. Every other month. 
every, actually, every other month. Okay. No, but you know what? It's actually changed. It's no longer for myself anymore. Um, if ever anything, it's all baby clothes now. Um, so, you know, but I've learned uh, to control myself because, well, she's my first baby. So, you know, it's, it's learning. It's a learning experience, but they grow out of them so fast. Are you doing the saving style that you would purchase, like, let's say, a shirt, like, a few sizes bigger, so at least she can wear it after a month or two? Yeah, so I've started that now. <laughs> <laughs> like, th- right this second lang. <laughs> yes, like today. <laughs> okay, so, Kobe, Iko then basically, same thing. You surf on your phone for, you know, God knows how long, and it's all online shopping. Uh, most likely. Uh, my mindset is, I don't want to get size ko dito, ng mga damit, mga sapatos. So, you know, I just find a lot of sizes in the States or in Europe. So, that's just my only excuse. I don't size dito. Eh. Andre, what was your biggest splurge online? Oof. Biggest splurge online would have to be uh, shoes. Because, you know, kami ni Kobe, we can't find our shoe sizes here. Unless anyone watching here wants to sponsor us, size 14. Actually, uh, if you don't mind me asking, see, Andre is a size 14. Yes. And Kobe? We're the same. So I basically give all my old shoes to Andre. You're so nice, no? You treat yeah. everyone. You give all your shoes to Andre. Andre gets money from your wallet. <laughs> Andre, I'll give you a chance to defend yourself. Huh? What do you do in life? <laughs> uh, I just stay rich, you know? I don't... <laughs> oh my Billionaire God. mindset. Billionaire <laughs> mindset. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who's most likely to have the most sidelines or hustles or rackets? Ah, nice. Okay, for Anne, it's Anne and di ko makita yung kay Jazz. Okay, still kay Anne. Ito naman, for Kobe and Dre, it's, they're saying that Dre has the most sidelines. Okay, like what, Andre? Uh, usually, um, since, you know, I'm in, uh, in the entertainment business, uh, as long as there's work given. I accept it. It doesn't matter if it's a lead role, guest things. Uh, because uh, just to share, I love what I do. So it, I just love to, you know, experiment and, you know, go through other roles. And that's pretty much my side hustle. But when it comes to other, like, businesses, not yet. But just for the sake of different roles, that's, like, my side hustle. I just keep on accepting work. So, yun lang. So I get to say. I guess it's this. both for the, you know, fulfillment of you as an actor. At the same time, fulfillment na for your TF. Mm-hmm. Diba? Anything and everything, you gather all that. Ikaw naman, and bakit, bakit tingin mo ikaw yung maraming sideline o maraming uh, side hustle? Um, you know, for the, aside from my, um, what do you call it, being in the industry, I do so many things. Ang dami kong racket. <laughs> Ang dami kong, you know, it's only now that I've really been able to slow down. But, you know, I have my businesses and I have some upcoming businesses happening. Um, so I'm always on the go now with my businesses. So oh, dami you, racket. <laughs> tama, tama. And that's always good. That's a blessing. Diba? The moment you get to do a racket, the moment you get to do extra work, that is a blessing for you yes, and for definitely. so many people. Yeah, okay. definitely. Well, friends, remember to stay with us because we still have the Q&A segment and the raffle prize at the end of this program. And who knows, you might just win 5,000 pesos worth of Sudexo GC. So please do stay tuned. Now we move on to the most important parts of the webinar, the round table talk. All the tips and insights we've heard from the speakers earlier are all important. Now they gave us a very clear understanding kung gaano ba talaga kahalaga to make time to build your financial resolutions and to stick to them so you can achieve your goals. But of course, it is always best to have someone who is an expert in doing these things. So once again, we'd like to call on our celebrity speakers and two of Manulife's Philippines' top financial advisors, Kito and Sherry, to join our celebrity guests and answer some questions they might have. Hi guys, welcome back. Well, I personally like what we're doing right now because a lot of people are quite intimidated of meeting an advisor, but in reality, these experts can actually help you determine the proper budget allocation to fit your lifestyle. Now, they can make you help decisions about what you should do with your money and help you understand what is involved in meeting your future goals. So now that we are all back, the floor is now open to our celebrity guests to ask questions. And of course, I'll start off, actually. Um, I want to say for the future, but I also want to live now and, you know, shop on things I like, like traveling and my clothes. How can I save enough to retire while living the lifestyle I want? Kito? 
I'll take that one. Uh, but since Kobe, I think we're we're practically the same age. I think I hope maybe just not the same height. Okay, uh, but maybe I can say uh, you have to have a saving mindset. Right? You sh- you should have a bigger uh, saving goal than a really spending goal. Right? And now, how do you do that? Well, my best advice for you is you have to know what you need. Right? You have to know what you want to do and maybe what you really need in life. In short, you need to prioritize what you want to save for and what you really want to spend on. Remember what I mentioned I think we're losing a bit of Kito. Kito, can you hear us? Please give us a second while we're trying to reestablish our... Kito, can you hear us? Um, can you guys hear Kito? Because I'm not sure if it might be my earphones. Nope, we can't hear Kito. There, it, it may be okay right now. Okay, we'll get back to that question later on. Okay, well, we're having a bit of technical difficulties. So it does happen. So, Andre, do you have any questions? I have a question. Um, since I uh, mentioned earlier that I wanted to get into real estate or investing, um, is it right to apply for a bank loan for that to happen? Actually, hi, Dre. So, actually, the most obvious decision point involves a lot of money, especially if it's a car or a house purchase. So, but if you have sufficient means to purchase a house for cash or a car, in that case, then you certainly can afford to buy one now. Mm-hmm. But if you are to apply for a loan and to guarantee you're financial, financially ready, you'll need good credit standing. That's the first one. Then you have to, have, you have to be ready with cash. Because remember, you have to pay for the down payment. So if it's a home loan, it could be anywhere from 10 to 20% of the property of that house. So you have to have enough cash with you and a verifiable income. So bank needs to assess if you have sufficient disposable income to pay your amortization before you can actually secure a loan. After doing all this and cash flow is still in good shape, then that is a good sign that you are ready to make that big purchase. Thank you very much, Chetty. Kito, you're back. Can we test your audio, please? All right. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Please go. Continue. All right. So where did I, where, where, where did I uh, leave from? Uh, the 50 30 20 rule uh, yes. did, I, did you guys hear all right so the 50 30 20 rule kobe going back to your question is 50 percent goes to your necessities which is basically uh what you have to spend in, at home 30 percent for your wants so basically that is for your shopping your traveling and basically the lifestyle that you want to uh, to have and of course we have to always make sure that 20 percent you set aside for your future money needs basically when it comes to savings investing you could set aside 20% for that. And I could say you can't go wrong with that. Thank you very much, Kita. Jasmine, do you have a question? Uh, Jazz, I think you're on mute. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, it's also in relation to Kobe's question because, Shampra, you know, we have our own financial resolutions. And though we can set the 50, 30, 20 rules for ourselves, it's Difficult to also discipline yourself. Dahil, maka nagpigil kayo all of 2020 and now in 2021, you feel like, oh, maybe I have some room to shop more or travel because uh, there are possibilities now to do so. So what what do you recommend for us in terms of uh, putting in a discipline to, to keep our financial financial resolution? Kito? All right. Uh, maybe, Jasmine, what I could say is you have to be mentally tough. I think saving also, you have to have that mental toughness that you have to stick to the path, stick to that path and really not uh, lure away and look at anything else. So focusing on what you want to achieve with your money long term or even focus on your short term goals. You want to have a lot of money in the future, you always have to ask that. Uh, You have to start saving consistently, small amounts or it also could be big amounts. It's really up to you. But the operative word that I could say is save consistently. You have to always save consistently. And maybe I, I mentioned this a while ago, set smart goals. I'll just repeat it, uh, what I said a while ago. Smart, which means simple, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-bound. So also, if you enjoy spending money, you should also enjoy saving money as much as you like to spend it. So that is what I always keep in mind and maybe you should keep in mind as well. <laughs> well thank do. you I very still, much. I'll set smart goals. Thank you. 
Anne? Um, yeah, so, you know, of course, I've done all of the having the smart goals. Um, so now my question is actually, you know, like me, I have so many people around me giving advice when it comes to my career. I have my artist agency for legal matters. Of course, I have my lawyers. Um, but, you know, nothing is permanent. And I want to make sure that, you know, for the future, I am prepared. So my question is, for those who are watching or employees, entrepreneurs, um, how important is it to have a financial advisor in our life? Okay, let me answer that. And so, you know, a lot of misconceptions of, you know, people get intimidated now with financial advisor. They say they don't have enough money to invest in. They don't understand investments. Tapos their finance, finances is in bad shape. But all the more they have to meet and sit down with an advisor. I know as new parents, I know that all you want for Dahlia is to have a secure future for her. Mm. But a financial advisor can create that roadmap for you and help you walk through the caveat of all your life experiences and stages. Whether you want to build that education fund for your daughter, plan for your retirement, understand income protection because you're a breadwinner, um, Erwan and you're a breadwinner of the family, and building a health fund and accumulation of, of wealth, a financial advisor can help you plan for it. And of course, if you're ready to have one, there's actually no cost to consult. You can read our articles and tips and find a financial advisor who is credible, comes from a trusted organization or some you're, someone you're comfortable with. When you purchase an investment or an insurance plan, for example, you'll enjoy servicing of an advisor who would actively manage your portfolio, especially since our needs and goals changes as we grow old and mature. I hope I answered your question, Anne. Yes, you did. Thank you. Thank you very much. Eto, I have a question. Now, for someone who's getting married really soon, like me, at nakikita mo, once you start really talking about it and sitting down on all the details, papansin mo na medyo yung mga expenses sabay-sabay na darating. And in fact, nakakagulat din siya ng konti, di ba? And sometimes for other people also, it can be overwhelming. So what would be the best tip or tips that you can give me? So again, congratulations to you, Louise and Jeff. Thank you for that recent engagement. So, you know, I'm one of your many followers in social media. And I see how smart you are in handling your finances and how you make use of your money wisely. And I admire for that, you know, from the income that you earn as a TV host and daughter. Yeah. Jerry, stop. <laughs> this is very <laughs> um, I know. So I can see that you did a good job ensuring that you have sufficient savings first before taking on a bigger responsibility. Although I agree that when you get married, the expenses would be doubled, actually tripled when you have kids. And if you could and it could really be overwhelming. Kaya, it's really good to be frugal while you're still single. Kasi quanti expenses means more savings for you to better plan the future set, such as this next phase in your life. So some tips as you ask. Prioritize expenses, list them down, identifying your must-pay expenses and avoid spending on non-essentials. Then dedicate a set of amount of your income to saving each month, which I think you're doing a month. It's mandatory and it takes a lot of discipline. Then map out your major expenses or purchases that ensure that you know preparing ahead instead of falling short when the time comes. Lastly, make meaningful investment by making your money work for you. You know, you're, you have to diversify your funds by investing into different assets like creating a passive income or an asset that could provide capital appreciation in the long run. And lastly, look for a trusty wealth specialist financial planner <clears throat> to help you walk through each life goal. Uh, ito yung tanong ko, is it practical ba? Kasi Jesse and I were thinking, we want to save as much as we can naman for our wedding proper. So we were thinking is, for example, yung ceremony kasi, we're gonna have it here sa Philippines. Tapos yung reception right after will be in Europe. Tapos yung, sa <laughs> yung sayawan might happen in Japan. So is that oh, quite yeah. practical? Are we planning it the right way? <laughs> and, we're, we're sleeping, <laughs> and we're sleeping in New Zealand. So <laughs> are my plans okay? Oh, I think I think that would be really good. You know, you know, it's a, a simple way of saying that you know, no one's invited. 
No. No one's invited. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. But hey, I'm only getting married once. We have to do it the right way. Diva. <laughs> So thank you very much, Tita and Sherry, for answering our questions. This goes to show that anyone can work with a financial advisor at any age and at any stage of life. You don't have to be a, you don't have or need a high net worth. You just have to find an advisor suited to your situation. Now, everyone, it's not too late to hit the Q&A box and answer your questions from our speakers. Right now, we're getting a lot of great questions from the audience, and I'm very excited to hear our guests answer all of these. But before that, make sure to stay tuned at till the end of the webinar because Manulife is giving away gift certificates worth 5,000 pesos. So please do watch out for that. But before we proceed with the Q&A, we'd like to first acknowledge the presence of our friends from the media. And we are with Manila Times. Yes, they are with us right now. We are with Manila Bulletin. And we also have Malaya Business Insight. We have GMA News Online. We have Metro.Style from ABS-CBN. We have Cosmo. We have Female Network. We have Sunstar Cebu. We have Lemon Green Tea, we have Corner Magazine, Orange Magazine, Ms. Lizy Bongwan, Ms. Virgie on the go. Thank you very much for tuning in. And now we are all back with our guests on screen for our Q&A segment. Hi, guys. Hello. Yeah, so once again, we are still doing our wellness webinar for everyone. And we have a lot of great questions here from the audience. And we'll try to address all these and as much as we can. But first, we will show the winners of the video questions. So congratulations to BG Calyata, Joe Antena Viral, and Mika or Mika Musada. You guys won 1,000 pesos worth of Sodexa GCs and an exclusive Manulife item. So let's play the first video question. And this one is for Kobe. Hi, Kobe. At such a young age, we know that you've achieved uh, so much. Unfortunately, we cannot You're a hear student at all. Brand endorser, and you've also I represented Philippines when you joined Gilas Filipinas for the 2021 Asia Cup. I'm just curious, how do you handle all of this? And what's your secret in achieving your goals? Um, there's no secret at all. Uh, you just have to be passionate, work very hard, and stay motivated. Just like in my last stint with Gilas, my team was motivated because we played all our games for our frontliners and everyone working during this pandemic. Thank you very much, Kobe. And the next question is for me, I believe. Hi, Luis. Can you share one lesson in the past about financial planning that is proved to be helpful in today's situation? Okay, well, for me, um, basically one thing that I learned, um, if I heard you correctly, the audio was a bit low, um, it's very important to diversify. Um, that's one thing. We always hear it from uh, financial advisors, from billionaires, but not keeping all your eggs in one basket. And for me, that, really, that simple piece of advice goes a very long way. And for our next question, it goes to Anne. Hi, Anne. Um, how do you make sure your businesses remain relevant and profitable throughout this pandemic? Anne, were you able to hear her question? Yes, I did. Um, thank you so much. Um, you know, it's very important that you listen to your consumers um, so that you can stay relevant. Um, and you always have to come up with innovations that are, you know, apt for the time with the current situation and what's happening around. And then you have to adjust and you grow. And um, yeah, that's just what you have to do. Listen and come up with new innovations so that you do stay relevant during these times. And thank you to all who participated in our Facebook activity and submitted their video questions. Now, before we proceed with live questions from our audience, our guests from the media also have questions for our speakers. Now, this question is from Cosmo Magazine for Anne. And the question is, what forms of self-care are you more willing to spend on these days? Um, I think it would have to be purchasing books and skincare. Okay, Those are the um, self-care books. Why? Because I feel like it feeds my mind and my soul. Um, you know, I'm so busy during the day taking care of Dahlia from 6.30 a.m. until 7. Um, thanks, Mom and Erwin, for taking care of Dahlia at the moment. Um, so, 
you know, my, the way I look at books, it's my term of self-care in feeding my mind and my soul. And of course, skincare, I feel like if ever there's a time that I can do that now, it would be now because I'm at home, I'm not doing anything, I'm not working. So yeah, that would Is be Is there anything skincare. you're saving up for, for 2021? Maybe a treat for you or your loved one? Um, right now, I'm just all about saving. Oh, hey, which is always good. Now, we yeah. have a question from Metro Style for Jasmine. Now, most 26-year-olds don't find themselves living independently and managing a whole household. So money-wise, how did you prepare for this major lifestyle change? Uh, it helped a lot when I was able to have the mindset of budgeting for my monthly expenses to begin with, just so that uh, I could uh, manage everything else outside of it easier and figure out whether it's a need or if it's a want. So that in terms of buying things for the house or buying uh, anything for myself outside of my needs for work, I would know uh, my limits or at least I would know uh, okay, I'm going overboard and I might need this down the line if there's a rainy day or if there's no work, et cetera, et cetera. So it's having that um, discipline to know your monthly budget first before you go spending for anything else that you might not need. Naman talaga. So I, I hope that's my advice. Okay, next question from uh, GMA for Anne and I. The question would be, many businesses suffered from the economic consequences of the pandemic. How was yours affected and how did you address the setbacks, if any? You first? You know, it was a very tough year. Um, I think a lot of businesses really did suffer, um, especially with no more foot traffic in malls for us. Um, we really had to turn to e-commerce um, and really rely on that. Um, and of course, hold back on collections being launched because it just didn't feel like the right time. Um, that's why when I said earlier, 2020 was a tough year, but you know, you just have to put all of the creative juices that you may have prepared uh, in 2020 and just throw it into the effort for 2021 as everyone starts to begin their new normal. Same thing would go with me. Um, I'm very fortunate that, you know, some of my businesses are essentials. So we did get to operate, but uh, of course, it's going to be uh, lower revenue as pretty much all the businesses. But then uh, my other businesses, basically, they all have to adapt. I have a mall-based business, like what Anne said, foot traffic um, was pretty much non-existent. So you have to focus on other ways to create or to generate that revenue. That's one thing that for me. Okay, now for Kobe and Andre, what financial les lessons did you learn during the pandemic? Or is there any financial lesson you wish you learned sooner? Uh, I, I wish I learned the 50-30 rule by, you know, Tito Kanina. Uh, I think it would help a lot if I knew how to save my money the right way. Uh, but, you know, now that I've learned from them, uh, I can save now and be better when I spend and save. Andre? Yes, same with me. Uh, I wish I learned the 50-30-20 rule as well because during the pandemic, um, as an example, I was afraid to spend because I didn't know when I was going to get work again. But if I knew how to budget uh, wisely, maybe I wouldn't have that kind of fear. So at least now I know, thankfully for uh, the great teachings our financial advisors have given us, uh, I will keep to heart in mind the 50-30-20 rule. You know, uh, Kobe, Andre, I guess a piece of advice I can give is why not get it tattooed on your forehead so every time you see each other, <laughs> you'll be constantly reminded of 50, 30, 20. <laughs> like, if you're eating yeah. out, if you're spending time with the family, it's bold better numbers, about 50, 30, 20. That's, <laughs> I guess that's about the best advice I can give. Okay. <laughs> what is the best investment you've ever made, Jazz? I would have to say um, it would be my apartment, my condominium, because it's uh, my property where, you know, at any given time that I need somewhere to call home, it's there. Um, and I, it's, I can go home to it now. You know, I, I've been able to manage my uh, bills and my budgeting according to that. And I've been... Uh, I was able to also focus a lot of my spending in early on in my career on putting it down for that property. So now that it's out of the way and I'm on, a decade into my work, parang I'm thankful that I, I don't have to think of like, oh my gosh, wala pa akong, uh, 
home for myself, you know, and, and, and now I can think of, okay, what else are my needs for myself while living alone or while living in a different country without my parents? How do I uh, survive on my own, basically? So I think it's my property and definitely my car. Because without a car, I wouldn't be able to go to work. <laughs> so, well, you know, why don't we ask our advisors, Naman? Like, Omuna Charity, the best investment you've ever made. Actually, um, just like um, Jasmine, you know, my home, I just recently purchased my home. And as I said, you know, I've been, I think, you know, uh, before, as she said, you know, I have to uh, set aside first everything, you know, I tried and avoided purchasing non-essential so that I can build my home for my two kids. And for me, that's the best, you know, investment that I've ever made for, for actually from last year. So it's good for me. I'm grateful that even during pandemic, I was able to do that. Kita. Uh, maybe what I could say, the biggest investment that I did, I maybe I could say two. Uh, the first one is, of course, investment in myself. Uh, basically, our job is to help people prosper, help people have a better financial future. Am I, am I lagging or can you, get, can, can you guys no. hear me? You're good. You're good. All right. So basically, investing in myself so that I could help people and really touch families so that they could have also a financial future and, and like a financial freedom uh, of their own. And maybe personally, I also, just like Jasmine, I also bought my own uh, condominium already, uh, actually last uh, two years ago. So that was my first big purchase and that was my first ever big investment for myself. And it feels good. <laughs> Congratulations. So Luis, if I may add, um, you know, another investment that I, you know, would really, that I really appreciate is me getting an insurance coverage for myself. Because as I said earlier, you know, I have three kids, I'm the breadwinner, it has to be income protection for them. So should anything happen to me, I'm assured that they will survive without, without me, uh, with me, um, not having me in their lives anymore. So, yeah. For our siblings, for Andre and Kobe, do you guys help each other financially? Uh, based on the game earlier, I don't think I'm helping Kofi at all. <laughs> Not anytime soon. <laughs> I mean, we've, okay. we've talked a lot as well about, you know, other business opportunities. And like Andre, he recently bought land as well. So, you know, that's one thing that we try to motivate each other as well. And we try to be vocal about, you know, what we need and what we want. What about for Anne and for Jazz? Well, do you guys help was, each other financially? I think we, we kind of we kind of do our own thing financially, but yeah. I, I think we learn from each other. Like she, you know, with with uh, Ate, I think who uh, has more capability to spend more. I've learned how to balance and learned also how to like invest in myself from her spending because she's also taught me that I shouldn't feel guilty for spending on myself or you know items that I do need for work because in the beginning I felt like it's not something I needed or chakanayan and you know I always felt bad like parang ang, ang gastos ko on things that I don't need or that other people can provide or things I can borrow naman from her but down the line you know I realized I also have to have my own things I have to have my own shoes my own clothes so you know that's when I started uh, to learn from her now okay that's why she's uh, spending on herself is because she needs it for work and it does come back in the mind when you invest in yourself how you look how you present yourself and etc i think that's how she's helped me in terms of spending or financially being uh, aware of, of what's good and what's not good to spend on for mm. yourself and you know i think um another thing is we do come together as well like if uh helping our family financially yes. um you know, so we do we do come together to help out our family. Okay, well, that was from uh, Orange Magazine. So now we have our questions from the audience. And the first one is for Kobe. Kobe, bro, as a student athlete, do you still get allowance from your parents or do you still ask for it? I mean, do you uh, get, every... sorry, let me, let me correct myself. Do you get allowance from your team or do you still get allowance from your parents? Ever since I started working, probably when I was 14, my dad stopped giving Audrey and I allowance just so we could learn how to save and spend. And for student athletes, man, there's certain colleges that do provide, you know, financial help and allowance for athletes. So 
you know, that really helps to pay for gas and to pay for uh, stuff for school and especially our nutrition. You were abroad for a while. Do you, did you ever notice if it was easier to save here in the Philippines or when you were in abroad? It was really hard just because when I went to the States, I couldn't work at all. They had a rule where if you were an athlete, you can't, you know, you can't make money out of your name or your likeness. So it was really hard because when I went to the States, I spent basically all the money I saved up and it was just hard. Uh, it was probably the first time I went through adversity with uh, financial stuff. And for Andre, again, now uh, we know that you have a lot of work. You're already very blessed with all your showbiz commitments. And we also know that showbiz is quite fleeting. So do you already have a backup plan outside of showbiz? Uh, yes. Um, as of now, uh, I'm planning on marrying someone who's rich so I don't have to work anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's pretty much it. That's no, all you need to do. But uh, <laughs> kidding aside, um, I... Like what um, you guys said earlier, it's best to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. So like earlier I said I have my own home gym. I need to stay healthy. So, you know, maybe I wasn't that, you know, blessed academically. But I know that maybe physically or as an athlete, I am. So maybe if in the future I can dabble in maybe in some basketball leagues. And when I mean basketball leagues, you know, sometimes people, I don't, I hope I'm not oversharing people retire at what, 35, 36. But if I know I'm confident with my body because I invest in myself, I can maybe last till I'm in my 40s. So maybe that's one of my backup plans after showbiz. Okay, for Jazz, what's the best advice or tip that Anne has given you about money? <laughs> Spend, Char. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> And I do know there's no, truth but, to that. <laughs> but um, really, I think one of the things we were just talking about it, and I think it's yung pamana, knowing when you can uh, spend grand because it's something that can be inherited. You know, it's something that can last a long time, that can appreciate and value. It's one of the things we don't really talk in depth about, like financial tips, but it's it's really ob observing each other's behavior when it comes to our money. I think that's when we learn best from from each other, I think, and yun nga, it's something that I've always heard from her, like, I'll, I'll buy this because it's something that pwede kong ipamana sa'yo, and then you can pamana for your daughter, and then now it's something she can pamana for Dahlia, and, and, and so on, and her family, so it's, it's, it's that, keeping that in mind, that uh, there are things you can spend on that can appreciate and value, which will, which will come into good day one day, so, uh, definitely that, like, not, not shunning that idea aside. Just after a few attempts on business and you said the results didn't exactly go the way you wanted it to go. So what made you decide to say that, yes, I want to try it again? Uh, just, I guess, willing to be open to different directions this time or different learnings because I know um, it's also as you go along, maturity comes into play for uh, business decisions or, uh, I guess, relationships with your partners. So I, I know baka, baka I wasn't mature enough back then to make the right decisions or maybe someone's personality, I got, I let my personality get in the way or I let someone else, you know, and we weren't on the same level or no one had enough time to figure it out. And I think every, every chance I get to correct a mistake, I always want to do it. So I think it's that. That's my energy. That's what drives me, correcting mistakes and making sure it's something I can be better at one day. And hopefully, you kahit slow but steady na business, happy naman ako. Basta may kumagana, basta meron. Basta rumorolyo. Yes. And for Anna, how difficult is it to have BLK, to have recess, and everyone can see that you are such a hands-on mom? It's, well, it was very difficult of course, in the beginning where I did have a newborn, um, but that's why it's very important that you find um, partners that you can trust and that you get along with and that can understand your situation. Because I was on a maternity leave, basically. Um, so that's why, you know, when starting a business, you have to make sure that you do find people that you do get along with that can cover and handle the business when you do have to take your time away. Okay, and for Cherry, I think that not then. Um, I'm 43 years old. Is it too late to start savings? Any suggestions on how to do it? 
actually, um, there is an old saying that it's never too late to turn around when you're going the wrong way. So, you know, ako, when I started this financial planning, I was 37. I'm 45 now. So that was eight years ago. So for me, walang too late, walang too early for that. You know, in, in a span of eight years, I was able to you know, fulfill some of my life goals already. So in a short period of time, I was able to do that. So all you got to do for me, huh? all you got to do is talk to an advisor because, you know, that person can actually help you customize the plan for you and help you identify on your short and for long-term goals one help you achieve you know all all those dreams and aspirations and for Tito next question is is it advisable to have a corporate job and businesses on the side to increase my income hmm uh well there's no hard and fast rule to this uh you can have a job and a business ongoing at the same time to help I mean, get more income that would be perfect. I mean, the perfect example that I could say is uh, that's re really like simply sweating it out for yourself. When you work, you sweat it out for yourself and then you earn. But there's this other thing that we call uh, the concept that I want to share with everyone, which is capital at work. About capital work, which means um, it is your money that is actually working hard for you. So you must save and invest your money with a good company, of course. Uh, that way, you allow yourself to save time and enjoy your life at the same time. Right? So basically, capital work means your money is working for you. Your money is working for you so that in the future, when you need that uh, for your necessities or anything else, uh, you know that you've been saving, you know that you've been investing, and in the future, you could get that back. So yeah. Thank you very much. And Sherry, we go back to you. The question is, I just graduated and I'm looking for a job. I want to help myself and others make good financial decisions too. Is being a financial advisor like you a fulfilling career and what should I expect? So, you know, I work in a corporate job for 17 years. And when I finally decided to move to the insurance industry two years ago, I couldn't be happier. So if you're, th if you're the type and if you're like me who wants unlimited income potentials and opportunities with flexible working hours, you know, being my own boss, and like what you said, you know, helping others make right fin financial decision to secure their future, then this job is for you and perfect for you. Thank you very much. Maraming maraming salamat to our speakers. That was very insightful and helpful, especially now that we have entered a new year. Now, do you have any final words for our viewers before we end our Q&A session? Kobe? Um, I just want to say thank you. Uh, I've learned a lot. I really learned a lot. You know, when, I, when you asked me earlier, I've known probably six out of 10. So probably now seven, eight. So I think I'm ready to save up and not spend anymore. Andre? Yes, I agree. I'm thankful for uh, for you guys guesting us here. I've learned a lot, and hopefully the viewers at home watching also uh, you know got inspired with our stories at the same time with these incredible teachings. And hopefully, well, not hopefully. I'm sure after this, I will make sure to keep in touch with our Manulai financial advisors. You know, to be more confident and to be more at ease when it comes to my spending habits. Jazz. Uh, well, to everyone listening in today, save, save, save. You never know when you're going to need it. But also never feel guilty if you're going to invest in yourself and in your family. So, uh, yeah, good luck with the saving, guys. 5, 50, 30, 20. <laughs> and? <laughs> Um, I think uh, to everyone that's watching, I think it was very clear what everyone here had spoken about. And it is, we can't stress enough on how important it is to save. Um, to work hard, to save, to invest, um, but also not to forget to enjoy a little for yourself so that you do enjoy the process and you don't overwork yourself. Um, so yeah, remember, it's always important to save for those rainy days. Cherry? Again, thank you everyone for attending today's session. I hope you were able to learn or two from today's um, presentation. And if you have any further questions, I'm just a call or email away. So have a great day ahead. So thank you. Uh, my out of mind, very short. Uh, live life, but live it with financial independence, of course. So uh, yeah. Thank you for everyone for attending this webinar. <laughs> And of course, thank you very much once again to our financial advisors, Keith and Chetty, and our celebrity guests. We have 
Andre and Kobe for us, Jasmine Curtis and Ann Curtis for sharing your financial wellness tips. Now, it is truly a wonderful experience having to share the stage with these inspiring individuals. Again, thank you and happy, happy new year sa ating lahat. Yes, the bench. Is that you? Kita mo yung ulo. Yes, ko to. Yes, ko to. Dad, dad, wala kang bayo. Ano si Kopi, o? Hi, Ben. Hi, Dad. Happy New Year, the Benji. Wait, yeah. Now, happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. Year. Happy, happy New Year. Hi. Happy New Year. Thank happy you. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Stay safe, yeah, everyone. Welcome. But Hi. now, it is time to show our winner for this afternoon's final raffle draw. And we are saying congratulations to... Rodrigo Monte, congratulations, winning 5,000 pesos worth of Sudexo GCs. So once again, I'd like to thank everyone who joined us this afternoon for taking time and for actively participating in our activity and Q&A segment. We hope that this webinar inspired you to take control of your finances and help you realize that making a plan for your money is the best way to meet your lifetime goals. And that wraps up this afternoon's wellness webinar. I am Luis Manzano. Watch out for future webinars of Manulife Philippines through their Facebook page. I will leave you with a quick post event survey to help us understand or how, let, let us know if you enjoyed today's webinar. Simply scan the QR code flashed on your screen. And together with Manulife, let's jumpstart our 2021 with a plan and live every day better. But I'm Isilamat. Stay safe. Happy New Year. journey it is so rich and so diverse and now more than ever so unpredictable a kaleidoscope of moments moments shaped by the decisions we make and all of us make thousands every single day these decisions can be complex from how we choose to invest to planning for later life to reaching our greatest goals we make these decisions easier every day, so everyone can live better. Every day better. This drives what we do. From sharing investment insights that others may not see, to helping her make sure his education is covered. From rewarding him for staying healthy, to giving her the confidence to soar. Every day better is doing a job that improves people's lives and believing that tomorrow will be better than today. Even during these challenging months, by deciding to keep going, to keep strong, and importantly, to keep smiling. For everyone, together, let's keep making every day better. Sabi ko nun, ready for you 2020. What a lie. May pa-claiming it pang nalalaman. Wala namang kaklaim claim sa taong to. Papunta kaming Tagaytay. Tagaytay? We're gonna visit Tagaytay. 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 Tindi ng pasabog ng January. 
buti sana kung fireworks lang. Kaso, dumating ang unprecedented times. Lahat ng pwede mangyari, nangyari. Siya nga pala, Lola Nora ko. Siya lang ata ready. Basta pang two years na to, ha? Anyway, yun na nga. Nakulong sa bahay, nakaubusan ng bilihin. Pag lumabas, nakakapraning. Iniwalayan nung gusto mo makasama sana habang buhay. Seven years yun, Zoe! Mabuhay ang bagong laya! Naghanap ng kaadikan para di mabaliw. Wala halaman. 2999! Oh, Miguel! Catch up with me! Di ba 25 ka lang? At mga balik alindog na program. Happy birthday to me! Happy birthday mag-isa. Kakalungkot din pala. Happy birthday, Miguel! Kung ano ang sinubukan. Ay! Masyado matangos. Oh, better. Kung ano, ano pa mga napagtripan. Kung ano-ano ang binili dyan. Hindi makapagpagupit, tinry na hindi mag-ahit, bumagyo, bumaha, ang daming nangyari. Wow! Diba? O, oh, ah, galing ano! Pero magbago na ang lahat. Huwag lang si Lola Nora. Last year sucked. But she was there to keep my spirits up. For that, Thankful ako. Hi, La. Ano, Miguel? Ready ka na for scope of moments, moments shaped by the decisions we make, and all of us make thousands every single day. These decisions can be complex, from how we choose to invest, to planning for later life, to reaching our greatest goals. We make these decisions easier every day, so everyone can live better, every day better. This drives what we do, from sharing investment insights that others may not see, to helping her make sure his education is covered, from rewarding him for staying healthy, to giving her the confidence to soar. Every day better is doing a job that improves people's lives and believing that tomorrow will be better than today. Even during these challenging months, by deciding to keep going, to keep strong, and importantly, to keep smiling. For everyone, together, let's keep making every day better. Sabi ko nun, ready for you 2020. Pfft, 
What a lie. May pa-claiming it pang nalalaman. Wala ka namang ka-claim-claim sa taong to. Papunta kaming Tagaytay. Tagaytay? We're gonna visit Tagaytay. Tagaytay ba? Tindi ng pasabog ng January. Buti sana kung fireworks lang. Kaso, dumating ang unprecedented times. Lahat ng pwede mangyari, nangyari. Siya nga pala, Lola Nora ko. Siya lang ata ready. Basta pang two years na to, ha? Anyway, yun na nga. Nakulong sa bahay, nakaubusan ng bilihin, pag lumabas, nakakapraning. Hiniwalayan nung gusto mo makasama sana habang buhay. Seven years yun, Zoe! Mabuhay ang bagong laya! Naghanap ng kaadikan para di mabaliw. Wala halaman. Two, nine, nine, nine! Three thousand! Oh, Miguel! Catch up with me! Di ba 25 ka lang? At mga balik-alindog na program. Happy birthday to me! Happy birthday mag-isa. Kakalungkot din pala. Happy birthday, Miguel! Kung ano-ano ang sinubukan. Ay! Masyado matangos. Oh, better. Kung ano-ano pa mga napagtripan. Kung ano-ano ang binili dyan. Hindi makapagpagupit, tinry na hindi mag-ahit, bumagyo, bumaha, ang daming nangyari. Wow! Diba? O, oh, ha? Ang kagaling, ano? Pero magbago na ang lahat. Huwag lang si Lola Nora. Last year sucked. But she was there to keep my spirits up. For that, Thankful ako. Hi, La. Ano, Miguel? Ready ka na for 2021?